Hi everybody, welcome to another iZday DWF repair video. Today I have on the bench an Apple II GS motherboard that was sent by Mr. Lee from England after the successful Commodore PET repairs. Before diving into troubleshooting, I wanted to give a little introduction to the Apple II GS, a machine I had never seen before. This was the last of the Apple II series. It is based on the 65C816 microprocessor, which is a 16-bit evolution of the old 8-bit 6502 CPU. It was greatly enhanced respect to the Apple IIe and IIc, not only for the 16-bit CPU, but also for having new more powerful graphic capabilities and a digital synthesizer audio chip. The audio digital oscillator chip, the Ensonic 5503, was designed by Bob Jans, who had previously designed the famous SID audio generator IC that was part of the great success of the Commodore C64 computer. However, Apple decided to cripple this very good computer by running the CPU at only 2.8 MHz, even if the slowest grade of the 65C816 was capable of running at 4 MHz, with the newer versions also reaching 14 MHz. Another inexplicable limitation, in my personal opinion, is the choice to only have the old 8-bit Apple II expansion slots, plus a memory expansion dedicated slot. With a 16-bit CPU, they could have added a few 16-bits wide expansion slots to have newer and faster interfaces, as anyway most of the usual options of the previous models are now built-in. Repairing such a machine is not always possible or better, let's say, worth it. This is because Apple used a lot of custom integrated circuits, like the keyboard glue logic and keyboard microcontroller, that interface an Apple desktop bus keyboard instead of the old ASCII one of the previous model. This other one is the sound interface glue logic chip. The famous Mega 2 integrated circuit it is basically a whole Apple IIe minus the RAM into a single chip. The video graphic controller and the fast processor interface were, in this case, fast is not sadly related to the actual CPU speed, I'd say. The slot maker IC does all the interfacing with the built-in devices and the expansion slots. And last but not least, we have the SMD variant of the integrated WADS machine, that is basically the all disk 2 interface card on a single chip. If any of these ICs fails, the most likely option is to source another 2GS motherboard to get a spare one, as most of them haven't been used elsewhere. Of course, we can hope that the fault is due to a RAM chip or a standard logic chip, for example. Now let's power this machine on. Hmm, all we get is a solid white screen. Luckily, the schematic of this computer is available. A link to it is in the video description. So let's start with the usual microprocessor troubleshooting checklist. The power supply I'm using is surely ok, so I'll skip testing the power rails. The first thing I'm going to check are the reset on pin 40 of the CPU, then check the clock input on pin 37, and then the bus enable signal on pin 36. Reset starts slow, then high, so it's fine. CPU clock looks working too. And the bus enable line shows activity too. Now the next step is checking any address bus buffers and data bus transceivers. The CPU address bus goes unbuffered to the FPI IC, as we can see here. But the CPU address bus is buffered by UJ5 and UK5 to address, for example, the Mega 2 IC. 
Close to them there is also UI5 that works as data bus transceiver. So let's have a look at all of them. Here we have UK5, UJ5 and UI5. One set of them goes to the CPU address lines and the other side goes to the Mega2 address inputs. Let's check UK5 on the Mega2 side. Looks good. All the eight outputs show normal activity on levels. Let's see UJ5 now. Well, this looks bad. Also, this one is too low. And this one too. Yes, we have definitely found a problem. I use the HP 547A current tracer to see if the problem is in the actual bus driver I see or if it's maybe driving shorted lines. I've calibrated the probe on UK5 outputs, so it doesn't show any other current on its outputs. And it doesn't show our current on UJ5 outputs too. Of course, it should indicate a high current on the VCC pin of the drivers, like in this case. It shows no supply current on the suspect IC. It means it's really dead. This other one correctly shows VCC current. Since I'm now sure that UJ5 is bad, I have just cut all its pin to avoid any damage to the PCB. I have then removed all the pin fragments from the pads. Now I made all pads flat by removing the excess solder with a copper wick. And last I remove any flux residue with isopropyl alcohol. While I wait for the replacement IC, I want to make sure there are no shorted lines either to VCC rail or to ground. Finally, the new FCs arrived. I didn't have any of them among my spares, since the 74HCT family did not see lots of use. So I soldered a replacement chip and it's now time to power up the machine again. And wow, it's alive!
I have now connected a floppy drive and Prados works fine. I only have all Apple II game discs. I used to play a lot on this one, but on the Commodore 64 version. So I hope you enjoyed this lucky repair. If you have any question, please use the comment section below. That's all for now, and thank you for watching.